All right, so I hit a sum goal recently to do a sheet combo guy. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> What's up, Death? And, well, here it is. This is pretty much going to be, uh, I guess, a 2020 update for my own guide. Because, I mean, as we know, Sheik's combo game has evolved quite a significant amount, even in the last four months. Um, so, I mean, let's just kind of see what new things we found, what old things are still really good. And let's go from there. Who's somebody that's good to combo? I'll combo Wolf for a little bit. I think comboing Wolf... Wolf is hard to combo. Fast followers are hard to combo. Let's combo Wolf. Rob, Rob would be good. Rob would be good, but um, there's one small thing about fast followers I want to show as it moves forward. And then I'll probably switch to comboing somebody with a frame 3 air dodge. A little floatier. Anyway, first things first. What does the combo entail? <laughs> right? So... The main two things that a combo needs to have, at least IMO, for it to be considered like a combo combo is you need your starters and you need your enders. So what move do you use to start your combos? What moves do you use to end your combos? And for Sheik, this is pretty important because if you do a combo that ends with forward aerial, if you do a combo that ends with this move that just hit Wolf for 4.5%, you are comboing wrong. And I guess bad is more of a correct term, but you are comboing wrong. Almost all the time, in my opinion with Sheik, you should end a combo with any form of back air, whether it's sweet spot or sour spot, or at least like sweet spot or sour spot at the initial hit. So it's nine or 11 on full hop or nine or eight on short hop, which is already like double of a fair. Should end it with back air, bouncing fish, which is 12 or 13, or up smash, which is 17, 18. No matter what, if you do a combo with Sheik, you should aim to end with any of these moves, as just doing that already bumps your damage by another like 10, 15%, which adds up seeing as Sheik is just a combo queen, right? So as long as you keep that in mind, if you do a combo, you always want to end with an ender. This is true for pretty much every character, but Sheik has so many combo routes that sometimes it's easy to get lost in the sauce, and you'll end your combos with forward air, which just isn't good. It's not something that you should aim for. So, how do you even get to an ender, right? Your combo starters, if I want to be honest, let me think. What are Sheik's combo starters? At 0%, you have forward air, you have nair, you have technically up air. You have grab, which is probably your biggest combo starter. Uh, then you can bear dash attack, which isn't too great. And then with dash attack isn't bad either. I would consider it an ender, but it's probably better to try to get one of the other enders. If you can somehow get a dare in a combo almost all the time, it's worth it. Just keep that in mind. But for the most part, your starters should be Sheik's forward air, Sheik's grab, and potentially Sheik's like neutral air or back air. And as the percents grow higher, maybe around like 20, you can start mixing in Sheik's tilts. Just doing stuff like that. Um, you can get even more creative with Nair stuff. Fair kind of becomes outdated as the combos go farther because fair sends your opponent too far so fair is much more of like an early percent combo starter and at late percents you can almost always still get forwarded a bouncing fish so don't worry too much about it just remember there are a lot of combo starters you can do outside of forwarder so as long as you understand the concept of starters and enders with pretty much every character in this game it'll it'll take your combo game really far as long as you're not ending with a combo starter, like a combo of forward air to forward air, does 7.7. .7. Even if you do like forward air to nair, let me see, 9.9. .9. But of course you can do a lot more than just like nair, you know? So, the number one combo 
literally the number one combo that you need to know as a Sheik player is forward air or forward throw to bouncy fish. Now actually, this works on Wolf at zero, but you can't get this to true combo at zero. Uh, not with the way the training room counter works. So if you actually want to practice this, just put Wolf at 10% and go into the lab, grab, forward throw, bouncing fish. Intricacies of this is when you forward throw, you got to make sure you can hold buffer it, which is pretty cool in this game. But pretty much you forward throw, you can start holding down and B, right? And the main thing is, at this point, either you're going to start holding in, if your opponent di in, or you're going to hold out if they hold out. And you're going to press A or B, whichever one you're used to, to just kick earlier, to shorten your bouncing fish. And it's easy as that. Hardest thing about this is honestly just getting used to it. If you get used to the timing or you just hold buffer the bouncing fish, it's really easy to get used to, I guarantee it. But pretty much this works on almost every character across the board. It's very easy, 20%. It doesn't, like, it's not super mechanically intensive, so once you get used to it, you can just do this the whole time. You can convert off of forward air into grab at low percents to make sure you can get this. You can convert off nair into grab at low percents to make sure you get this. As long as you get a grab, you can forward throw to Bouncing Fish. And let's say this will work against most characters from 0 to 50. For a free 20% anywhere from 0 to 50. And against Fast Fallers, which is like Wolf, Fox, Falco, well, Frame 2 Air Dodgers, Wolf, Fox, Falco, Sheik, Pichu. Uh, the list goes on. If you're fighting somebody that has a faster air dodge or potentially a frame one out of shield option, uh, it'll start working around 10%. Yeah, so in Smash 4, if you kicked with B and you're holding forward in B and you get hit off stage and you accidentally input grenade, you die. Your, uh, your stock is gone. So I just got used to pressing it with A personally. But there's not too much of a difference in this game. You can even press down B and then C stick if you want to. There's a lot of ways to kick with Bouncing Fish earlier. But one main thing about forward throw Bouncing Fish is the fact that it only gets 20%. And this is something that I don't talk about often because I actually think this is a much harder part of Sheik's toolkit. So. Keep that in mind when it comes to learning Sheik's down throw combos. Now, Sheik's down throw combos to me are Sheik's more optimal combos. Um, I can show a light example. Let me see if I can get this first try. Ooh, I forgot to get the god up airs. So on NDI, you can get a lot more on fast fallers. On out DI, you can still get a lot more on fast fallers. Oh, I missed. But the general idea of down throw combos is down throw combos give you enough time to extend the whole combo to where you can get a re-grab or start transitioning into your stronger mid percent combos. Thank you, thank you. And the big problem here is getting the initial hit off of down throw is very difficult. Now, I think down throw combos are incredibly optimal. I think down throw combos are the future of Sheik. But they are incredibly difficult. If Wolf DI is in here, which I guess he doesn't want to, but if Wolf DI is in here, being able to get a conversion off of that is just, it's very difficult. You have to get a very close hitting to the ground up air. And in reality, you can just keep up airing a lot of fast fallers. But you also have to be able to react to the fact that they can DI outwards. And be able to convert off of an outwards DI combo. 
So down throw combos, while they're really good, it's really difficult to execute. And the main gist of down throw combos, if somebody DI is in, you want to do a very close to you up air. And then you can just do that up air, potentially drag somebody back down into a regrab. If somebody DI is out, you want to do a very delayed forward air, where this forward air kind of pulls them closer to the ground, right? And off that forward air, you can potentially get an up air, and then you can use that up air to drag them down and go into your typical combo. Now, I used to think that was kind of the end of things until about two weeks ago when this IDJ stuff started coming uh, more out in the open. So let's combo height. Because a lot of the times you would probably, let's say, let's say I have an Ike set to DI out, right? So let's say Ike is DIing out because out is really good versus um, forward throw, right? Oh, so hard. And this is what I mean when I say down throw is really hard to combo off of. So the fact that you can get like 48-ish percent without super optimizing here, thanks to uh, IDJ off of F-Tilt, is a very recent addition to Sheik's combo game, right? I would argue this is literally a few days old. So... The sheer fact that you can extend throw combos into F-Tilt and then convert off of that F-Tilt is actually really good. But it's really difficult. It's really difficult. If you want to get good at down throw combos, you should probably get some type of another tool to help you lab because it's just that difficult. Either that or you have to go through it quite often when it comes into training. Um, but down throw combos do work a lot better when it comes to using platforms. Since you can simply do down throw up air against a lot of the cast and then convert off of a platform. Does IDJ remove sharp multiplier? Yes, because it's technically a full hop or a double jump. Um, a big reason with this as well. So another reason why down throw is better than F throw. If somebody DI's F throw out, for the most part, the best thing you're gonna get is Bouncing Fish, assuming you don't have a lot of stage to work with. Or you have to super hard read what DI your opponent's going for. If you go for down throw, you can react to both DI's with a pretty good combo. And against some characters, it's incredibly good. It makes the heavies matchup significantly better. While against other characters like Pichu, at the least, you can get down throw bear against majority of the cast, even if you have rage. And it's not like a lot of percent, it's 16 to 18. But there are percents where you can't get forward throw to bouncing fish if Sheik is at too high of a percent. So going for down throw bear is always another very, very consistent strategy. Especially since down throw bear, you can position yourself at this distance, where Sheik can beat a lot of characters at this distance. You can dash attack. You can potentially dash under them. You're a fast faller, so you can get to the ground first and shield and punish. There's a lot of things that you can get off of down throw bear. But overall, down throw combos are a lot better than forward throw combos. They work on pretty much everybody in the cast. They're just very difficult. And that's probably, to me, that's the hardest part about Sheik. But it's labable. It's something that you can get better at. So if you do want to lab down throw combos, like I'm always, I'm down to just let you know, ask some questions. I'll give you some answers, you know. And a big question I've been getting lately is down throw up air regrab and whether it's like good or not. So let's set Ike to DI away because it's a it's even possible on DI away, right? You can. 
easier get it if you can potentially get two up airs it makes it a lot easier oh i messed that one up but if you can only get one up air there's times where you go for down throw up air re-grab and your opponent hasn't been out of a grab for too long so the game thinks you're going for a chain grab but overall i actually think this is really good there's some characters where this is really good against like even an ike Trying to air dodge out, he couldn't get out until like two or three reps. And I think this is really easy damage as well. So I don't think this is something that's bad to go for. I do think if you can get two up airs, it's probably an easier setup. So just keep that in mind. But you should definitely... I would say you can stray away from using this. Unless you're fighting heavies. I think against heavies, it's very good to go for this because they just can't get out. But overall, I think this is really good. I think it's really easy damage. And if you don't have rage, specifically if you don't have rage, you should go for this. In general, down throw combos, if you don't have rage, they're really good. If you have rage, you should probably go for down throw bear or just go for forward throw bouncing pitch. So as long as you keep that in mind, you should be good. Can you get down throw fair on DI in? Not reactively. You can get it off of a hard read versus some characters, but reactively, I don't think you can get it. At least not from what I've been able to lab. And, you know, just off my experience, I haven't been able to consistently get it reactively. Reactively, you can generally jump, go a little forward, and see if they went forward and you can react with the forward air, and if they went in, you can up air. So pretty much you jump a little forward with the left with your left hand, and then you just pick forward air or up air with your right hand. A little simple. Okay, now that we're kind of past throw combos at zero, <laughs> things will probably pick up a little more from here because, uh, I mean, I, just, I, I have a lot to always talk about regarding down throws. There's probably still more I can talk about, but there's a lot of character-specific stuff it's very specific so i mean if you have questions you guys can always ask me later but a big thing with sheik again is the sheik does no damage combos that's what i'm going to be calling it and these combos are <laughs> fair 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 right you know where people are like wow Sheik did so much work for all of this damage now first of all I didn't do any work, I just pressed forward air over and over, it's not that hard, right? But yes, it doesn't do that much damage, that did 16.7. I could probably do something here that just... That already did 19, right? So, there's a big change in Sheik's metagame versus, let's say, Smash 4 to ult, where Sheik's Nair is arguably her best combo move i would say it's her best combo move because there are situations where your opponent just can't do anything about nair and you can just keep chaining nair you can keep looping nair forward and this actually works against the majority of the cast it's pretty crazy and the intricacies of this because i get a lot of people kind of wondering about why they can't do the nares right so if you notice the first nair here if i land forward air like close enough to the ground you can jump and delay your nair on landing eh, let's do like a little high percent you can't hit ike right you can kind of jump and delay your nair on landing but when it comes to doing it off of a tilt you should probably do dash forward nair fast forward as long as you can do this input, this dash forward nair fastball, you can start to get nair chains a lot more than bear chains. And then your damage will start going up a lot more, right? Then you keep in mind what I said about combo enders, and it just becomes crazy. So you can probably get, let me think, very basic, or at least to me, very basic, 27% combo on Ike. Fair, nair, F tilt, nair, F tilt, up air, bear, right? Uh, 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 
Super simple combo works on pretty much anybody that has a frame three air dodge. And that did about 42 damage. So the grand idea is if you can do a fair string, try to replace your fares with nares and understand how to nair. Because there are situations where you need to do a short hop and delay your nair like that. And there are situations where you have to F tilt, immediately dash, jump, nair fastball. That probably works, believe it or not. But the biggest thing, again, when it comes to doing even nair combos and getting more damage than your fair strings, you have to end with an ender. If you can find a way to end with bouncing fish, awesome. If you can find a way to end with up smash, even better. But the super basic ender that I use all the time is I'll just go for F-Tilt, a bear bear. That alone does 23%. And if you do a combo going into this, it's like you do the whole combo and then you add 23% to the end. Now, if you happen to do F-Tilt fair at the end, instead of getting 23%, you get seven. There's a very big difference. Sheik does a lot of combos to the point where that 16% will start to add up. Do I play Claw? I play Claw. So, with that, how do you even get into Nair? Well, we talked about one of them where it's F or Fair into Nair. This is probably your most basic one. The hardest thing about this is once you hit your Fair, you have to start dashing forward. So it's pretty much a committal option, but if you know you're going to hit the Fair, you can do it, right? You can also get it off of F Tilt, but it's a lot harder off F Tilt at early percents. F Tilt will probably start working around like here, right? Or, if somebody's jumping, <laughs> you can actually just nair them. That's probably one of the more consistent ones that I go for. Because a lot of people in this game, they, I mean, aerials are really good in this game, right? And if you notice right there, instead of going for F-Tilt Nair, F-Tilt Nair, I went for F-Tilt Nair Nair. If you get your opponent in like an anti-air scenario, or like they're just too floaty, you should probably just go for double nair to kind of staircase them downwards, so that way you can end up just like doing more damage and actually getting an ender. Um, one very interesting thing: Can you delay nair up air. You could, but the opponent has to be really high. So like you can potentially do this. Um, right? But your opponent has to be at a very specific point. So if you see the opportunity, you can go for it. Um, but even right there, you saw that it missed. It's probably better to go for um, Nair Nair most of the time. But there are very specific scenarios where you can do um, Nair up air. Another thing with this as well is there's a way to get backer as an ender here. But it's a very fast roar. A lot of people tell me that they have a lot of trouble with it. But it makes the combo ender really smoothly. Instead of getting like maybe Nair dash attack or maybe just like a Nair and ending with a Nair, you can end with another like 15%. It adds up, it adds up. So, one big thing at this percent, if you just don't want to do a lot of these crazy combos, you can always. F tilt to up smash. Now this works. This probably starts working around 40, but let's just pretend it doesn't. Let's just say 45 to 60. This is probably your most basic ender ever. The cons of this is if you do a spaced F tilt, it's really hard to get the up smash, even on a no DIing Ike computer it's really hard to get the up smash so you have to find a way to get close to your opponent in order to get the f tilt up smash that's the biggest con about that it's not that hard of an input you can practice it all you have to do is get used to running and up smashing even if you don't have smashed it and on the flip side this one is actually a lot harder it is down tilt up smash down tilt up smash, there's two to three cons about this. Well, down tilt up smash is actually one of Sheik's best confirms in my opinion. Um, when it comes to the percents where it actually kills, 
On some characters, Tumble will make Sheik miss. Sheik's up smash is not that large of a hitbox. Any type of DI can kill it. If your opponent DIs inwards, they might be too high above you. And if your opponent DIs outwards, you just can't reach them. So when it comes to using down tilt up smash, you have to, and I mean like you have to, know exactly the percents that you're going for this. And you gotta make sure you make it count. Best way to force an opponent to have no DI is just use it as a parry bait. If your opponent is trying to parry, that means they're doing a neutral shield because they don't want to roll or spot dodge. And then they let go of that neutral shield, they're still going to be in a neutral, like, control state. So if you want to go for down tilt up smash, just make sure you know your percents. Because if you don't know your percents, you can miss. And if you miss, then you are going to get hard punished. Sheik is a very fragile character. Now when it comes to that... I'll probably go more towards the kill confirmy things. I feel like I've touched up on a lot of Sheik's earlier percent combos. With the only thing being kind of like what you can convert off of up air. At earlier percents, you really shouldn't go for, I think, drag down stuff. You can always just go for up air bear. Um, and if you do a jump double jump bear like that, let me show you guys. Oh, I don't need it on control. What am I looking for? I'm looking for a frame by frame. Oh. So if you get this, right? If you fast fall with Sheik, pretty much almost no characters can challenge you here. Like, almost no characters can challenge you here, right? So if you just go for up air bear at this percent and you go for another back air. If anybody tries to challenge you, they're just going to eat 10% to the face. If anybody doesn't try to challenge you, you get a trap their landing. It's a really good situation. I think going for just up air bear in general is really good. I wish I saw more Sheiks go for it because almost no character can challenge you there. And when it comes to early percent combos, if you want really safe damage, you can always just go for up air bear off of F tilt. Ooh, but I'll talk about IDJ stuff later because right now I just want you guys to focus on this consistent safe damage. Consistent safe damage, right? Very, very easy. So, the next thing, we'll move to kill confirms, right? Let's move to kill confirms. Everybody's most enjoyable part about Sheik. The number one kill confirm that I think everybody should know how to do is Needles to Bouncy Fish. So there's two specifics about Needles to Bouncy Fish. Let me show you guys. So look at how much damage Needles do here. 1.0, right? Look at how much damage Needles do here. 1.6. These are two very different types of Needles. Close-up needles has a lot of room to confirm into it. While far away needles, while not only are you far away, he just has less hit stun. That's just natural. Like that's how it's gonna work. So if I set this Ike to jump, let me see. And I try to needles to bouncing fish from there, in comparison to getting needles to bouncing fish from here, the second one will work a lot better. The second one is probably a combo that Ike can't escape, and the first one where you get needles from over here is going to be escapable by Ike. I lose the 1.8. Sheik's needles, this is actually a lesser known fact. Sheik's needles do more damage if she's close to her opponent. So that did 11.3. I think this will do like seven, but it's stale to like, what? Six, seven? Five, two! Anyway, close up needles do a lot more damage than far away needles. If uh, there's a confirm at later percents where you do needles to back air, this is actually a very interesting confirm. But it only works with close-up needles. So close-up needles in general are a lot better than far away needles when it comes to needles to bouncing fish. So just keep that in mind when it comes to learning this confirm. If you have somebody at around 100 and they're floaty, you can probably get both needles. And if they're close, oops, no, I... 
If they're close, it'll true combo. If they're far, they probably just can't escape. Close needles also put into tumble a lot earlier. I don't know if this will tumble. But in general, close needles are a lot, a lot, a lot better for needles to bouncing fish. If you get far away needles, it becomes a little more risky, but it does start to true combo as the percents go on. The main thing about needles to bouncing fish is you have to rise with your needles. It's a little more lenient in this game because she can act a little earlier before she lands. But when it comes to needles to bouncing fish, just make sure you rise with your needles. I use claw for this, so I jump with Y and B at the same time. Not like that, like this. So just keep that in mind, right? All you have to do is rise with your needles. If they get hit by the last needle, they lost their stock. You can also confirm into this <laughs> at earlier percents by just doing hard nair on the ground. It's really messed up. Uh, it kills people really early since you hit them very close to the blast zone. You can also convert to needles just off of hard nair at early percents regardless, right? But the main thing is Make sure you rise with your needles, make sure your opponent's getting hit by the last needles, and when it gets down to it, a moving forward needles has a lot better of a chance of confirming than the farther away needles. Because the farther away needles, she has to travel a lot of distance in order to catch up to her opponent, but the close-up needles, she does not have to travel that far. As long as you stop the bouncing fish, you make the bouncing fish when you do it, you bounce fish and you start holding backwards so it's shorter or farther depending on where your opponent is, you do the second kick, you know, the works. So I actually think Neil's the bouncing fish is probably one of her most important confirms. Because you can even throw it out in neutral, you can just go for it, just like out of the blue, if your opponent's a higher percent. Has to be right. Yes, you have to be rising with your needle. You can be falling, there are situations where you can be falling off stage to get it, but it's really difficult because you have to hit with the final needle for the most part. The final needle is what makes the confirm. That's the main thing. Now, the second most important confirm with Sheik, Baron Nair to Bouncing Fish, right? <laughs> so you can either do Strong Nair or Weak Nair with Sheik. But with bear, for the most part, I think you have to do weak bear at the percents where it matters, right? Weak bear kind of works out, but you got to make sure you do... There's two different types of reverse bouncing fishes. Let me see. Can you do fair fish? You can, but it's not as important. So if I do bouncing fish like this, where my control stick starts downwards, and then I swing my control stick back, I end up going forward for like four-ish frames. I thought it was three, but I guess it's four-ish. Uh, and that doesn't really help when it comes to bear fish. But if instead you move your control stick a little backwards, kind of like a little down of down diagonal, if I could explain, then you just instantly do a reverse bouncing fish. Works a lot better for bear fish, but it's really easy to mess up. So the more important one that you should know is for sure near to bouncing fish. Think about Sheik's Nair, it's a very safe move. Very easily confirms in a bouncing fish. As long as when you land, you just bounce your fish immediately. Even if you move backwards, it'll still confirm. If you move forward, it'll still confirm. As long as you go the right way with the bouncing fish. Main gist, just hit with the weaker hit of Sheik's Nair. And then you just press down B. Easy as that. If, if you got this far, you should be able to do this, I think. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm misjudging, but I think you should be able to do this. The main thing there is in comparison to a lot of the other bouncing fish confirms where you kind of have to hold closer to sheep to make sure that you know you reach your opponent nair your opponent can go really far so you want to follow your opponent and if you get really good at doing nair fish oh man there's times where you hit your opponent and you know they're still going to be in hit stun, so you delay the bouncing fish, so they go a lot farther horizontally before they get hit, and then you kill them a lot earlier. Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. Every time I do that, I feel cool, and everybody probably thinks I'm a nerd, but I'm over it. 
One cool thing about this is it works off full hop. It works during ledge trapping. It's quite literally the horizontal version of Fox's Nair up smash. So you can kill people while you're in advantage state with it. It's one of Sheik's best confirms. Should definitely practice it. Bear bouncing fish is a little harder. I wouldn't advise really practicing it. Um, but it's always a good mix-up because Bear kind of has the same properties as Nair, where you can get the sour hit. It doesn't linger for as long. The hitbox is a little weird, but it can work out really well, too. So now moving forward, let's go to a little more of Sheik's complicated stuff, where I can explain a little more. So I talked about... Oh, what the heck? Ooh. <laughs> I talked about Sheik's drag down stuff a little earlier, but I didn't get too too into talking about it. So let's talk about Sheik's drag down combos. Just in time for the good tech, maybe. I I I I think the downer tech is the most important. So drag down combos kind of work a lot. They're not too difficult, I think. The main thing about Sheik's drag downs is you want to land before, like, one of her hits ends. If you can get three hits, that'd be for the best, right? But if you get, like, one or two, it's still... It gets the job done. Like, let me see if I can get one. Ooh. Like, it gets the job done, right? So... Why doesn't up air always confirm into grab? Uh, well, there's, I think there's just different types of drag downs. Like, you saw that one. I can be in the air for a little longer. You saw that. Like, that's just, that's just a bad drag down. If you do an up air and you're rising, and you just can't drag down, like, in time. Like, if they get hit by the third up air, and you're just not dragging them down, then they're not going to hit the ground, and you won't be able to convert off of it. Right? So you need to be moving down with your up air. So for the most part, you don't want to do a short hop up air. I can't even like do this on purpose. You don't want to do a short hop up air. You want to do a short hop? Oh no, you want to do a short hop and delay your up air. Right. No, it, it, it up air drag downs confirm on everybody. Up air drag downs just work on everybody. <clears throat> it's just a matter of how good the player piloting Sheik is. The 55 hit combo. <laughs> so as long as you're moving down with the up air, then you can generally get an up air drag down. But there's situations where one of the up airs miss, like that. I didn't get the last hit before I dragged the ground, so it couldn't, uh... You know, it just didn't drag down as difficult as or as strongly as it could have right but for the most part when it comes to drag down stuff you just want to hit the ground right before you don't want to do a rising up air you want to do a short hop or a full hop if you happen to be going onto a platform and delay your up air just a little bit right let's get one to ten how hard do i honestly say it is for chic to pilot uh or to pilot chic i don't know i've just i've been playing her for years everything comes naturally So, it's pretty... I, I would say if you want to practice just the gist, just do this. This will get you into the habit of practicing the up airs. You want to do the first three hits, and then you can start fast falling after the third hit. So it's like 1, 2, 3, fast fall. Or 1, 2, fast fall, 3. I think both work very well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But as long as you have that idea kind of instilled... Then you can start going for a lot more um, drag down stuff. Which, the most important drag downs that I think people need to know, that I think the people need to know, is kind of what I talked about with down throw. If you can get down throw drag downs just in general, I think it's really good to go for. I think. Down throw drag downs can give your opponent, or not your opponent, give yourself a lot of leeway. If you practice them, they become really simple damage for Sheik. I think overall, it's just something really good to know 
Um, the second one, this one I actually would say is the most important, is being able to get drag downs off of down tilt. Drag downs off of down tilt, um, probably Sheik's easiest way of killing, and they work even better with rage. If you notice here, I'm not doing a rising up air. I'm doing the short hop, delay, up air, fast fall, right? And the third most important is rain dropping. Now, rain dropping is so difficult. Don't feel bad if you're having trouble getting a rain drop. Like, absolutely just don't feel bad. I was so bad at rain dropping that I gave up for about a year. <laughs> so don't feel bad. Um, Golgi's video will probably still teach you a lot better than I can about rain dropping. But the main things to keep in mind, at least for like a more universal method, you want to, instead of Instead of jumping straight at Rob with this, right? You want to dash under Rob, and then you jump, right? I accidentally double jumped, so this probably won't work. But the main gist is to dash under the character before you go for the raindrop. Koji's video is hidden and hard to find now. No! Well, the main gist though, dash under the character before you do your jump. If you don't dash under the character, it's really, really difficult to get a raindrop on a lot of characters. Rob is a very easy character to um, raindrop, so you can probably jump diagonally on him. And very specific, like, fast fallers, you can also jump diagonally on. But for the most part, when it comes to doing a raindrop, you want to dash under the character. And it's a really fast dash. You probably can't catch it if you're just watching this normally and you don't know what you're looking for. But if you can get the F-tilt, dash under the character, and then just go under, it makes it work a lot, a lot better. Now, you can also get this off of down tilt, but off down tilt, it's probably better to, um, you can probably just go into, what's it called? You can probably just go into F smash. As much as it doesn't look like it'll work, it'll work. Just trust me. But you can also go for down smash too. So whichever feels more consistent at the time. If you're trying to get that off of down tilt, like a raindrop off of down tilt, you have better options, you know? Yeah, the second fast fall is big. I think you should practice it on majority of stages. Practicing it on Smashville. Personally, I don't go for it on Smashville. It's a big reason why I think Smashville is one of Sheik's worst stages. Because... Getting drag downs onto Smashville platform is pretty impossible. Um, I would very much mainly go for this on Battlefield. Drag downs in general work a lot better with Rage. So it makes Sheik a stronger Rage character in this game. Do you still need to dash in with down tilt version? Yes. In general, going for two drag downs, you generally have to be under your opponent. With the first one. Now that goes into, you can also, if you happen to get just an F tilt around this percent, it's really, you don't have to get a dash under if you want to get a drag down into forward smash. It's a lot easier to just get a drag down into forward smash. It works at a lot later, I, I wouldn't say a lot later percent, but it's just really easy to get as long as you keep in mind the principle, you don't want to rise with your up air. Even if you dash under Rob, you don't want to rise with your up air. You always want to delay your up air so you can drag your opponent down, right? So, with that being said, 
again, you can also just do F tilt drag down stuff. It's, it's really not as difficult as the raindrop, but it can still be a little difficult. But a more difficult thing, I think, again, this is one of Sheik's most important confirms just in general. Being able to do down tilt, up air, drag down confirms. Now, in general, it's pretty much like a smaller version of the raindrop, or is we just generally calling it just drop top, right? Tipper down tilt, or even sour down tilt with your opponent DIing in. You just do the same principle. Short hop, delay your up air, fast fall, drag him into the platform, make sure you land like third hit, one, two, three, fast fall, up smash. This is probably one of Sheik's best skill confirms. It makes her really scary on PS2. It makes her tech chasing on platforms really good. There's a lot that just going for a down tilt here benefits Sheik's metagame, right? Thank you! Yo, still right. Thank you for the 10. If you move them all the way over there, right? If they happen to tech out or they just DI a little farther, you can always just get down tilt, drag them off the platform into F smash. I'm surprised that said that was true. I can't believe my mind. And this can also work over here, just in general. Now the combo counter, this is one of the reasons why practicing drag downs is really hard. Uh, the combo counter is very not correct when it comes to drag down combos. For some reason, for some reason, the combo counter is not correct when it comes to drag down combos. So, you really have to like be strict on yourself if you're practicing. Or you can just practice down smash stuff so you understand the timing. And then go for forward smash when you get used to the timing. What's my percent? I have no rage. I'm practicing all of these with no rage, but in an actual match with any rage, drag down combos become significantly easier to get. Needle's footstool. Oh, I'm gonna go over Needle's footstool. In a bit. Oh, so. I'll go over when to down tilt, because I, I, think, I think every Sheik is just not as good at down tilting as I am. I briefly brought it up earlier where you can go for down tilt as parry bait to make your opponent just not DI. Just get your opponent used to you landing on them with really safe aerials. And then you can just go for down tilt. A big part of down tilt and combos as well. If you're going for nair loops, then there are situations where you're going to have to switch in an F tilt with a down tilt because your opponent is going to be too far. So let me see. I might hit him from the back. So there's very, very specific situations where you want to go for down tilt. Because down tilt can still go into nair loops as well. So down tilt in general is like, it's a pretty good combo starter. It's not as easy to use as F tilt, so I don't expect people to just magically be good with down tilt. Like if I get an F tilt at this percent, Rob's gonna be really high. Let's let's put him to 47, right? If I get a spaced F tilt at this percent, Rob's gonna be really high and I can't do that much about it. If I get a spaced down tilt at this percent, you have enough time to get the dash up, um, the dash of Nair, which is kind of a good Nair. But if you F tilt, he's too high, you can't get a good Nair. So around this like 40 to 50%, if you can get a tipper down tilt instead of an F tilt, it's really, really good. But it'll take some practice. It'll take some practice. There it is, input lag, how much better would Sheik game? The game would be better. You know, you don't even need to talk about how much better Sheik is gonna be. So down tilt in general, as long as you understand the kill confirms you're going for, just don't use it like willy-nilly. F tilt has a wider hitbox vertically, down tilt just hits a little farther horizontally, if at all. And the tipper just helps you a lot when it comes to getting little extensions in your combos. So the next thing, the next thing 
I'm gonna talk about updraft because I'm not good at this and I think this is ridiculous. I think players will start banning Battlefield against Sheik um, if they haven't already, which is both a blessing and a curse because it's a big stage anyway, so Sheik doesn't really want to big stages all the time. If you have trouble killing, you don't want a big stage. But the updraft is Shachi, who's a Japanese Sheik player. It's Shachi's kill confirm that he's been using a lot. Uh, as you guys can tell, I'm amazing at it. I've already gotten it 10 times. But maybe I'll put Robin a little higher percent. Oh, how do you get this, dude? I missed the platform. Wow, wow, wee wow. That's the gist of updraft. You can kill people at as early as 60% even without rage on battlefield. It's pretty crazy. It's a really good kill confirm. Uh, I doubted it for a while. I doubted it for a while. Um, but it's pretty dang consistent. Yoshi's 2, I haven't even practiced it on Yoshi's because my consistency on this stage is really bad. Uh, in order to get it, oh god, you do not do instant double jump. If you do instant double jump up air, you do not hit the top platform. So you actually have to jump and time your double jump. Because that way you land right above the top platform. So, I mean, the gist... It, this is probably one of Sheik's more... Just... Oh, that was a bad one. This is one of Sheik's more li literal combos. That's the word I'm looking for. Where you pretty much F-tilt. You get a jump, double jump up here to land on the platform. And you chase their DI. You double jump up here. It works on a lot of characters, even fast fallers die really early. Um, and of course, it's a vertical killing option, so Rage will make this kill a lot earlier. You can also cross up DI on the final up air. If you don't know about Sheik's DI cross up, I'll explain it in 10 seconds or less. Sheik has two hitboxes on her up air. One goes diagonal up right, one goes diagonal up left. If you're fighting an opponent, you can intentionally move Sheik forward to cross up their DI on the final hit, making them go to the left if you choose so, or go to the right, so it's very easy to kill opponents a lot earlier. It works a lot better with Rage, it makes F-Tilt up air kill characters on pretty much every stage. It's a very pivotal point of playing Sheik, otherwise your up airs never kill. Don't know when DI out on F-Tilt escapes up air. Uh, no, but F-Tilt is really fast, so you, you can always just not go for, like, uh, the updraft, you know? You can very easily just do this and react to another combo route. Um, it's not like you're stuck super going for the up air. You have a lot of time. So when it comes to updraft... It's a really good kill confirm. I think Sheiks should start learning it now if they haven't already. It's very simple. Battlefield is a widely regarded, like, good stage. For, like, a lot of people like Battlefield a lot more than FD and such. So if you know this, and you can become a better Battlefield player, or even other triplats, it can also work on Town. I just don't know the timing. But you should try to learn it. I think you should try to learn it. I think there's maybe two more things that i can personally cover off the top of my head well let's say three because uh this is going to be something very simple that i think is ridiculous that i've only been doing a lot more lately because i just don't think about it you can do a landing fair to bouncing fish to kill people at really early percents on the ledge if they just di weird uh it just it sounds really dumb that I've only been doing this now. But it works really well. Uh, there's a lot of time to react. Yeah. 
If you can go for fair bouncing fish on like ledge traps like this. Very good. Very good on almost any character. It's a great option to go for. You should try it out. Calling for the Jazz combo. I haven't fully touched up on IDJ stuff yet. Believe it or not. We're gonna do one more thing and then we can touch up on IDJs. So this, uh, you can take it off control. You can tell if it's true or not. It is one of Sheik's newer, more cool confirms. It's pretty messed up. It's uh, Needles to Footstool. Now the thing with this, there's a lot of intricacies that I'll talk about a little bit. One, if you needle too far, you're not you're not footstooling your opponent. I've I've tried. <laughs> I fish for this a lot. If you really want to get this, you can go for a lot closer of a. You can go for a lot closer of a needle. But for the most part, if you go a little too far, it's a little scary. Um, as you can tell, a lot of people know there's the two sides of dare that opponents can send. This is good because you can do a DI mix-up, but it's also bad because if you don't know how to delay properly, you can always get a backwards dare. But backwards dare isn't good. Backwards dare cannot always confirm into up smash. But there's two main things to worry about. If you needles and your needles go too high, then your opponent might get aerial footstooled. And if your opponent gets aerial footstool, they can tech, which isn't the best thing. There's a lot of um, mix-ups that you can go for just with the idea that your opponent has to be matching R, right? But the main thing that you want is you want to get a grounded footstool. Less needles lead to less hor or not horizontal. Less needles lead to less vertical movement, which means you can get a grounded footstool a lot easier. But less needles also mean less damage. So, there's times where you just want to go for the needle, kind of delay it a little, make sure you can get the grounded footstool, right? If you keep getting the wrong hitbox, against a lot of characters, you have to delay it ever so slightly. So if you notice, there are a lot of situations where I dare and I'm like all the way up in the sky in comparison to being a lot closer to the ground. Um, those are pretty much to make sure that she can move to the side. That way she can dare Roy moving forward. But it's a little harder. If you get the timing down, you get jammed. Okay. But for the most part, this does a lot of damage. It's pretty worth going for. Um, since I switched my controls lately, I've had a lot easier of a time doing this. So since I have L jump, I can simply jump with Sheik and then just time to jump with L. Makes it really easy. Um, but even beforehand, I would just double tap Y. The main thing for me is you have to dash forward and then you tap Y like twice in succession. You have to dash forward. If you don't dash forward, it doesn't work too well for me. Like, if I try to do this and jump forward, like, I'm just not going to reach the Roy. But if you dash forward, wait until you kind of see Roy landing, and then you press jump twice. You should be able to get it. It's a lot easier if you... Again, you can just practice the single needle into this, just over and over. If you get backwards, there would bouncing just be an option. Not in this game, not in this game. If you get backwards there, you should probably just, um, probably just bear him. Either bear or... <laughs> There's times where you can get a backwards there. And then just try to trap him with another needles. Because, again, people are really afraid of this confirm, so they're going to be trying to air dodge. If they don't... Air dodge neutrally, you can still cover their landing very easily. There's a lot that you can do. Getting a landing needle, you don't have a lot of lag. So if you are having trouble with this, or if you just can't seem to get it, you don't always have to go for the confirmed damage. You can just go for a type of reset.
The hardest part about this is probably uh, getting the footstool, TBH. So as long as you practice it, you know, you'll get used to it. Now, against faster fallers or heavier characters, it's a lot easier to get. And if somebody DIs in, if you get the wrong hit of dare, you can still potentially um, get the up smash. Against some characters, it'll still work as long as you time the dash properly. They still can't really get out. And against other characters, it's rough. You're going to have to go for it at earlier percents. But against floaties, you can also just go for your typical needles confirms, which I don't think I really touched up on that, so I'll touch up on that after this. But the main thing, this is just a confirm that you can lab over and over and over again. The only thing you need in a full match is full needles, and full needles is a very good whip. So if I like set the Roy to forward smash, as crazy as this sounds, people will do this. Right? You can do stuff like that, you just have to start pulling it off in an actual match. So... I missed. The scariest thing too is it's mad scary to go for. Interesting, let me check something. Wow, okay. So, if you're labbing this, you should actually set your opponent to do side smash. Because if you get your footstool wrong, then you're just gonna get a phantom footstool. And you're not going to actually go through the footstool animation. If you wait a little too long on the dare, you can see the forward smash start. So I, I would suggest this. You can set your opponent to side smash. That way you can actually see if you get the footstool on. It's cool. There's a lot of really creative ways to use training. And I feel like I figured out a lot of them. Just trying to live chic stuff. <clears throat> so... Two last things about Sheik. Needles confirms and IDJ stuff. These kind of go hand in hand, but let's start from the top. What about parry footstool? Parry footstool is mad hard to do. It's mad hard to practice. The meta will get there, but let's wait until offline returns to super talk about it. The just about that is the same though. You hold shield with one button, you parry. If you parry, you should dash into your opponent to get the footstool. Right? And it's the same exact thing as getting the uh, footstool dare off of needles. The only thing is you're getting it off of um, a parry now. So... Needles confirms, uh, needles at earlier percents, the main thing you want to go for is probably just needles dash attack or like needles jab. It's not really that great, right? Um, you can also go for needles off of a lot of Sheik's aerials. It works out pretty well. But the main thing is you're kind of going for harder reads on DI. Plus on a small character. It's the same input. It's the same input, but I'll show you. I'll show you. A big thing with needles combos is if somebody's up there as well, you can do stuff like that. Where if you want to get needles to up air drag down, it works really well. It works a little better with platforms. But when it comes to most of Sheik's typical combos, needles aren't really an ender. They're a lot more of a starter, right? So you can get needles here, it's a lot more of a starter. It's kind of hard to fit needles in between a lot of combos. Oh, counts up missed. So, if you can whiff punish somebody in the same exact way I talked about regarding needles footstool, if you can whiff punish somebody, with starting needles, it's really good. Because needles used to only be like a camp tool, but now they can be used as a whip punish tool to start your combos. Right? But outside of that, needles probably have some of Sheik's best confirm windows, I would say. 
Not even counting Needle's Footstool Dare. Because if you get strong Nair, you can get really good openings into Needles. Roy's kind of a bit of a fast faller, so he does have a chance to tech. But when it comes to this, just really close to the ground landing aerials, Needles can set up a lot of really good things. You can get down tilt there. Uh, I think I showed it a little earlier. Let me see if I can get it. People with frame 3 air dodges can't do anything about that. So that's a really good situation. If you happen to catch somebody dropping, you can always just go for Needles Bouncing Fish. Needles set up for kill confirms a lot easier than they set up for mid percent combos. So just keep that in mind. If it's kill percent and you have a full stack of Needles, that's a very big threat for your opponent. So a lot of people... <laughs> A lot of people get caught up in using Needles as like a free neutral win, and it's good, but they don't fully... You can get a lot more off of Needles if you just have the Needles available to you, right? So when it comes to high percents, if you get your opponent off stage, you can always just focus on getting full Needles. Just get full Needles, next time they come back on stage, there's a lot that you can do regarding those Needles. But even without that, there's the infamous... Needles forward smash? Needles up smash? Ooh, can I get this on Roy at 50%? It's not the sweet spot that I want. Can I get the sweet spot? Needles up smash and Needles fish. Needles fish is pretty crazy. The fact that Needles fish confirms from so far is really good. That's the plus of Needles fish. The main thing that you're looking for here is you want to land right before you throw your needle or right after you throw your needle. You don't want there to be a lot of time between you throwing your needle and you landing because otherwise you just you can't confirm it's like a landing aerial think of needles as a landing aerial that is a kill confirm move needles f smash on miss tech well needles f smash actually it works mad early of course it depends how much needles you have or how close to the opponent you land right but needles to forward smash kind of starts working really early. I haven't figured out the specifics, but just keep that in mind. When it comes to these percents, one thing I've been going for lately, since needles to bouncing fish won't kill here, and there's very, uh, sometimes it's hard to get like needles up smash if I don't have a lot of stage to work with. So I've been starting to just do needles to F smash, because needles to second hit F smash does confirm. So don't be afraid to just go for needles F smash, even if you're not too sure if the first hit will hit, because the second hit will hit. It's really good to go for, it'll kill a lot earlier than needles bouncing fish. But needles bouncing fish does work from a farther distance. That's the big plus of needles bouncing fish, it's a lot safer of a confirm to go for. While needles forward smash, while it is pretty safe due to needles not being very punishable, it's a little riskier to go for. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And then the last thing, I think the last, last, last thing that I can talk about, I think, is IDJ combos. Now, IDJ combos are another new thing within the last few weeks. Um, where it makes it to where I've been getting a lot better at them and they've kind of been opening a lot of very good mid percent routes to me which I think is crazy because I've labbed so much optimization off of low percent combo routes that it's kind of weird that there's even more to optimize right <coughs> So IDJ stands for instant double jump. The idea is you do a short hop. Well, it's more so you press jump and before your jump squad is over, you let go of jump. And then immediately after you press attack and then you press another jump. And you'll do you'll do kind of this rising jump. A big difference with Sheik, where I can show you, if I do a full hop forward air, I will never hit Roy on the ground. Never ever. If I do an IDJ forward air, I can hit Roy while I'm rising. Void. 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 I, 
promise I can do this. <laughs> there we go. Oh my god, I did it. What about short hop fair? Well, in this specific instance, what this gives Sheik... If I do short hop fair here, I can't really combo. Short hop fair here doesn't really go into anything, right? But, if I do F tilt and I try to go for full hop fair, it won't work. This just does not work. The chances where it works is I have to probably F tilt twice to get Roy a lot higher. I need to do a frame perfect full hop fair. And then I need to somehow get a combo off of that, right? But, with IDJ fair, you can do F tilt to fair, which is just, as weird as it sounds, it's, it sounds super basic, but it's really good. If you have any semblance of stage to work with, then you can just get fair into landing Nair and just do, you can do whatever you want. I've been trying to also get better at doing fair into IDJ fair, but it's a little harder for me to get used to. I'm sure I'll get used to it in like a week. Oh, Roy's too fast of a faller. But the main thing with Sheik is what this gives is being able to just get a lot stronger conversions without, without traveling very far across the stage. Like this will work on majority of stages. Uh, the hardest part about this is probably the IDGA part. <laughs> and the fact that against like some characters, if you can only get fair, fair, then you might just have to get F-Tilt, fair, fair, bouncing fish. Which honestly, F-Tilt, fair, fair, bouncing fish is a really good confirm. That's still, in comparison to getting, uh, you, you get around the same percent, right? But you get a lot of stage, you can cover a lot of, um, you can cover a lot of the stage. You can potentially get up smash. I'm, I'm too lazy to figure it out. But the biggest thing is being able to get IDJ fair nair. If you can get IDJ fair nair on a character, they're done. They're like super done. But like even there, with the landing nair, you can walk up down tilt, which is pretty nuts. Against some characters, I'm sure you could even dash forward tilt. There's a lot that opens up simply because you can get that, right? Oh, I didn't pivot cancel. Now, this is... When you combine this with a lot of Sheik's low percent combos... Let me see what I can get. In, in a world where I'm just... I have my back to the wall because I'm fighting Roy and Roy is fighting ghosts. Right? Whoa. Let me see what I can get off of a down throw. You go so far, Mr. Roy. You can actually just get that? That's so free. This is kind of a combination of, I guess, everything. Ooh, so close. So even just that off down tilt or down throw, right? You get 48. In comparison to maybe ending it here. You can always just move forward across the stage. You can convert a lot more off F tilt. One big thing as well. Instead of converting off of F tilt with um, a bear bear, you can get a really good situation where I mean you just get full stage, right? If you do use your needles, you can get your needles back. If you don't get, if you don't use your needles, you can get needles. In comparison to ending with bear bear, where sometimes you have to chase your opponent, which is a very good ender. Don't get me wrong. You can just extend a lot farther. Um, there is the potential to carry your opponent across the other side of the stage, but I haven't figured everything out yet. Roy is a faster faller, so it's a little harder to get um, fair nair on him. But even at like higher percent, you can get fair nair, right? 
So IDJ stuff opens up a lot for Sheik. Even to the extent that I can just do this. Oh no. Just even to the extent that I can extend a forward air into just a very good confirm is really good. While you can still get this, it can be very difficult to get an ender, like an actual ender of a lot of Sheik's other things. So it makes using F-Toad at earlier percents a lot, a lot better. And even to an extent, I think, it makes her platform combo game a lot better too. I'm not there yet. I'm definitely not there yet. But overall, IDJ stuff makes Sheik's combo game just really good. I'll probably do that. Huh. You get like 46 all of an F-Tilt at this percent? That's messed up. Like, I wish I could do that with like majority of characters. So luckily, Sheik is pretty blessed. She can get a lot of things out of her combo game, both when it comes to just raw damage and when it comes to killing. It just takes a lot of work in terms of getting to the point of labbing a lot of Sheik's confirms and just understanding overall what you want to go for and what you don't want to go for. Was so already known? Nope. Not for Sheik. Yeah, that makes sense. Work is in practice, yeah. It takes a lot of effort to get to the point. In an actual game, it doesn't take too much effort. The inputs aren't too crazy. But for the most part, there's a lot of things you can practice. So I would think you would feel kind of overwhelmed, but there's a lot of simple things. There's a lot of things you don't really have to practice. At the end of the day, as long as you understand the concept of enders, combo starters, and what Sheik's kill confirms are, then I think you'll be in a good spot. Hey, Jerry, canceling your first roll hop and inputting your second. Uh, you pretty much. You just. You're not canceling anything. You just press jump once. You let go of jump. You attack, and then you press jump again. And then for me, I I couldn't do a lot of uh, Pichu IDJ stuff because an IDJ that's a few frames off the ground isn't good enough. So I switched my controls. I'm sure I can find a lot of potential neutral situations to do that as well. Forward throw IDJ fair at zero work. Even if it does work, you can't get anything off of IDJ fair until around 20-ish percent. So yeah, uh, I mean, I don't think I missed anything. I'm pretty sure I touched up on almost every aspect of Sheik's combo game that isn't kind of obscure outside of like platform combo game but am i gonna do a pichu update video we'll see we'll see door's not closed the only big thing with like <laughs> with platforms is you can do really funny hit confirms like down throw uh nair fastball grab very you, you just get like potential easier combos but they're a little different Horizontal combos work best, and you can up air them to put them onto the platform. As long as you understand that, it should be good. I can show some platform combo concepts, though. IDJ Tech to Daisy probably doesn't work. Almost guaranteed doesn't work. Mainly because, like, Peach doesn't gain much off of Rising Aerials. A lot of characters don't gain much off of Rising Aerials. So an easy example, you can do Down Throw, Nair, Grab. Even if Rob, like, DI's out, you can just chase him, Down Throw, Nair, Grab. Easier part with platforms as well is you get a lot of up air extensions. You can apply IDJ stuff to platforms. If you do a full hop forward air with Sheik, you can't land with anything no matter what. But if you do an IDJ, then you can land with Nair, up air, and fair. So it opens up a lot of Sheik's combo routes. Sounds really... 
Really, ooh. Makes her combos sound really nice. Let me see if I can get this. Oh, Rob. Robbie Rob. One scary thing with battlefield platforms is the platforms are pretty high. So being able to get a nair is really difficult because usually you nair people really low. The cannons, the boo, boo. Let me see. Let's work on 30. It's like something that is possible. It's not too crazy if you just get used to platform extension. And even if they tech, you're landing with Sheik's Nair. You don't have that much time to like, you can just cover the tech. I think IDJ practice. Right? Even just like stuff like that. There's a lot that she can get off of platform extensions. The main things being you can get very easy up air extensions to get your opponent to just higher percents. But you can even do stuff like that. There's a lot that she can do when it comes to platform stages. Yo, up, Minato. Should it's right trigger? Right trigger is awkward. That's why I don't like it. But I, I've always showed it with both triggers. But yeah, platforms give Sheik a lot of extra combo routes. Gives her a lot extra kill confirms. But there are still a lot of things that Sheik needs to know when it comes to just horizontally comboing. I think here I should be able to get... Oh, I should have been able to get something extra. That would have been spicy. But you can see the idea. When it comes to having platforms, the main thing, again, and I can't stress this enough, you get a lot of room to just use up air as an extender. It's like stuff like that. So yeah, I think I covered everything. Maybe I didn't cover fair bouncing fish to the extent. I didn't talk about up tilt, but I think up tilt is very unreliable as a kill confirm or as just a move. You can use it to jab lock on a platform, but generally you have to aim for a character's head or like their leg because up tilt 2 can just hit a character and knock them onto the jab lock. So, I just don't like up tilt. Pivot cancel. I only really use pivot cancel, up tilt, and neutral. I think uh, dash walk, up smash is pretty irrelevant. I think for the most part, you can just dash up smash, and you can just see if you're going to be next to your opponent. Bounce and needle fidgeting. I don't think either are that important in this game. Sheik just has a good dash. You don't need to make her dash any better. I'm using instant reverse. I, I don't know. I'm just doing a fast roar as far as I'm concerned. It makes having or it makes bear uh, accessible as an ender. This is pretty important for a lot of characters. So if you don't know the input, uh, Rex it. Get a combo. What combo? <laughs> you guys want to see the void combo? This is probably the sickest sheet combo in this game. Come on, chat. I know you guys want to see the void combo. It's a really good combo, I'm telling you. Going over Sheik's recovery. Not in a combo video. Anyway. <laughs> Here's the void combo. Wait, get off the stage. Is your reversing any good for landing? Yeah, it is. That's the void combo. It covers pretty much every tech option, including miss tech. It's one of your best 0% combos if you're not good at comboing. Back when we thought Sheik sucked, this was the most consistent combo that we could ever figure out. We as in, you know, 
So, yeah, this is the void combo. Uh. Uh, I refer to a lot of things when I play based off of other characters, so of course you guys know Needle Footstool is from Lily. Um, down throw back air. Again, I talked about this like an hour ago, but this is a very great tool for consistent chic damage. Down throw back air will work until like 70. So call that the Charlie because out of everything that I watched from Charlie's Chic, that is the only thing that I took. Um, I call the sh I don't call updraft the Shachi. I call the Shachi ledge trapping with down tilt because it'll ledge trap with down tilt into back air. I usually go for F tilt if I want to, but down tilt into back air can catch an opponent DIing incorrectly really well. Um, it's just a really easy like two hitter. So. I think that's all I can think of off the top of my head. Off of like kill confirm -y stuff. Except for back air fish. Back air fish is just really hard. I just, I don't think, I don't think you should go for it. But if you do go for it, you can get hard back air into the same bouncing fish where you need to be pressing diagonal. If you don't press diagonal, you're gonna miss, you might die. Um, so keep that in mind. You can do off sour down tilt. Sour down tilt is mainly for tech chase scenarios. You can go sour down tilt here. Tech chase with up air because tech chasing with up smash is very risky. You put your character at a lot of risk, so you should instead go for up air because if you miss, you can still cover a lot of what your opponent is trying to do. What's the jazz combo? Jazz combo is landing nair needles because I just didn't think it was true. So TLDR, uh, let me see if I can do that. Surprisingly, that would work, but it's very hard to get it on top of Battlefield. The fair dash walk up smash a thing. Fair up smash is a thing. Like, dash walking won't really change the fact that you can DI very well out of any instance of fair up smash. So, in general, like if you want to go for fair up smash, you should just try to see if your opponent is going to attack or something. Insidia, thank you for the three. But yeah, fair fair up smash, it just it works. It's just the thing. Whether you dash walk or not, fair up smash is a thing. It can work at a lot of percents in the same way that Nair up smash can work at a lot of percents, but it's uh has a kill confirm. I mean you can get it, but if your opponent DIs any way at all outside of nothing or in, you're not going to get it. It doesn't really change that much. So in general, if you go for a fair and you see your opponent DI inwards, you can react to that and get the up smash. Unless Rob lands on a platform. But yeah, this this has been a thing since like Smash 4. It's nothing like super new. Dash walking doesn't make it significantly better. But dash walking makes it to where you can get under your opponent easier in a situation like this. The only con really is the fact that you have to land a fair and you have to instantly commit to a dash walk forward, which is very, very far. So you just have to keep that in mind. But for the most part, you can run. Running will give you a lot more uh, preemptive reaction time, I guess. Instead of fully committing to the dash forward, you can see where your opponent is, kind of get a rough gauge of what you think your opponent might or might not do. Because there's a high chance they just DI'd somewhere different. Alright, last check. Is there anything else that I didn't cover? Jab, jab stuff, uh, jab stuff is good, but, uh, I won't explain them because I think they're only good until the meta evolves and then it won't be good. Because if Sheik does double jab on a character to get down tilt, then that, uh, opponent, you can start holding outwards during the double jab. And, um, you can't get double jab into down tilt up air. You know, dash attack. Oh, that's actually something that I missed. 
Uh, this is one of Sheik's best mid percent combos, in my opinion. I don't think many Sheiks go for this. Just Needle's dash attack. It's a free 20% on a projectile. Uh, it's really good in Sheik's arsenal. Needle's dash attack works on pretty much every character around these weird mid percents. So just keep that in mind. Like, if a wolf is landing into you with Nair over and over and over again, you just get full needles, he's gonna shoot his laser at you, you're just gonna press shield and charge your needles again, right? And then you just go for needles dash tag. Even at 78 against a lot of characters, it should still work. Characters can't air dodge, they can't double jump. There's not a lot that a lot of characters can do about Needle's dash attack. Very crazy thing, if your opponent's close enough to you, then you can actually do Needle's into tilts. Wow, it's very, uh, it's hard to get a whiff punish like that. It's possible, so keep that in mind. The most consistent KO options? I did. I did. Really, you should only go for, like, Nair Fish, Needle's Fish, Down Tilt, Drag Down... I would probably just argue those three. Those three are your go-to kill options. Because down tilt drag down helps you with platforms and on horizontal stages. Nair fish, needles fish help you kill off stage and closer in advantage state. So yeah. I think that's about it. I think that's about it. You guys know the drill. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys learned something. And if you didn't. Watch it again! You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Alright. Thanks for watching this guide, guys. See you guys at the next video. Right? Peace.